After movies such as The Lost Boys and Interview with a Vampire done a lot to make vampires pretty cool, and before movies like Twilight killed that cool factor totally, WWF was smart enough to introduce a trio of vampire-like characters to the company which actually somehow worked. Many fans like to say that the mid-90s in WWE was a period of time that was filled with cartoony and ridiculous gimmicks, but let's not forget that vampires were blending in with porn stars and pimps in the Attitude Era. To get it out of the way early, WWF actually never referred to their brood as vampires, on commentary or otherwise. Instead, commentators would say they were known for living a gothic lifestyle. Clearly, to you and me, when you see a guy with fangs, drinking blood and all that, you immediately think vampire. But for whatever reason, WWE never referred to the group as such. But they were fucking vampires. Even stranger is the fact that commentators would never call Gangrel's favourite drink blood, but instead refer to it as a thick red liquid. Contrary to this though, the brood organised blood baths for their opponents, which was totally fine to be referred to as blood. Weird. This must have been something to do with standards and practices back in the day, where WWE wasn't allowed to show someone drinking blood. But let's take some time to look at the brood, starting off with how the trio all came together in the WWF. So we'll begin with both Edge and Christian. The duo were high school friends growing up who absolutely obsessed about wrestling. Both Christian and Edge received training from Ron Hutchison, however Edge also had the pleasure of getting training from Sweet Daddy Siki and eventually Edge also got informal training from Bret Hart at the famous Hart Dungeon. Edge received a tryout match with the WWF after finding work in Japan and WCW. Christian went along with him and the pair worked against each other in a tryout match for Vince McMahon. Edge received a contract and he went through the developmental stages of WWE. Eventually, he was promoted to full-time touring with the WWF and he put in a good word for Christian around this time. Christian then got invited to the WWF affiliated Dory Funk training camp in 1998. After completing the camp, Christian signed a contract also with the WWF to become a full-time performer. Gangrel, real name David Heath, was trained by the great Boris Malango and worked around Florida during the early days of his career. Before his first WWF run, David worked for IPW and formed a tag team with Tom Nash, known as the Blackhearts. The Blackhearts even found work in All Japan Pro Wrestling. Tom Nash was married to Luna Vachon and their marriage eventually fell apart. David and Luna then became romantically involved with each other and the pair married on Halloween in 1994. Heath and Luna developed the Vampire Warrior gimmick, which is the moniker David took on before breaking away from the Blackhearts. The Vampire Warrior worked for many promotions across America, including the USWA, before making his way to the WWF in 1993. David worked as a masked heel named the Black Phantom. He was used as a jobber, losing to the likes of the 123 Kid, Razor Ramon, Lex Luger and Earthquake. After this first WWF run, David travelled to ECW to work alongside Tommy Dreamer and Luna and also worked in WCW before making his way back to Vince McMahon in 1998. Edge made his WWF television debut in 1998 on the June 22nd episode of Raw and Gangrel made his debut on the August 16th episode of Sunday Night Heat. Edge had been working as a mysterious loner character so we didn't really know much about him except that he liked to walk around streets and shout quite a lot. Edge said that even he himself didn't know what the character was supposed to be. David Heath however was thrown straight into the Gangrel gimmick upon his return. The name Gangrel came from the White Wolf tabletop RPG game, Vampire the Masquerade. Gangrel was a type of vampire clan in the game. I'm not going to pretend for a moment that I know anything about White Wolf games, but those with an attention to detail would notice that WWE would have to give White Wolf props and copyright disclaimers when Gangrel was used in things like video games or merchandise. Edge and Gangrel would eventually be booked into a feud against each other, with Gangrel working as the heel and Edge working as the babyface. At Breakdown in Your House, Edge was involved in a match against fellow Canadian Owen Hart. During this match, Christian made his WWE debut, distracting Edge and aligning himself with Gangrel. 
It was then revealed that Christian and Edge were, in storyline, brothers. In Christian's first ever televised match, he went on to capture the WWF Light Heavyweight Championship. Eventually, Gangrel and Christian convinced Edge to join them. On the October 26th episode of Raw, during a match between Kane and Gangrel, Edge ran in and attacked Kane to show his allegiance to Gangrel and his brother. The three of them formed an alliance known as the Brood. In their first match as a group, the Brood defeated the Oddities on the November 1st episode of Heat. The group would also have a match with D-Generation X on Raw shortly after, and at In Your House Rock Bottom, the Brood defeated the Job Squad featuring Al Snow, Scorpio and Bob Holly in a six-man tag team match. One of the coolest and most memorable things about the Brood was their entrance and theme song. The Brood's entrance frequently gets ranked as one of the best entrances in WWE history as the trio would rise from the ground surrounded by fire and red lights. The Brood's theme music was also very fitting for the stable and is still well remembered and liked today. What you may not know though is that the Brood's theme music also had a secret hidden message in it. Gangrel said, If you have the right skills and technology to play it backwards, the guy who did the music, Jim Johnson, was a big Beatles fan. So it says, I buried Paul, walk with me. So here, have a listen to the Brood's theme music played backwards and see if you can hear this message. So just to clarify for those who maybe didn't know, the Beatles were involved in the spread of backmasking both as a recording technique and as the centre of a controversy. A radio station once received a caller who asked the DJ about a rumour that Beatle Paul McCartney had died and claimed that the Beatle song Revolution 9 contained a backward message confirming the rumour. The DJ played the song backwards on his turntable and heard the words, Turn me on dead man. Along with this was a rumour that the track I'm so tired by the Beatles had a backwards message that said, Paul is a dead man, miss him, miss him. We all know Paul McCartney didn't die obviously, but this was the wacky shit people did to pass time in the late 60s and early 70s. So it's just a little bit of background there about this backwards message that's included in the Broods theme. We would also be amiss for not mentioning the Broods use of blood baths. A bloodbath consisted of the lights in the arena getting switched off, the flashing red lights of Gangrel's entrance coming on, and then the arena lights turning on again to reveal the target bathed in blood. It was always a really cool visual and it wasn't really overdone that much, so it was fine, I think it worked well for the brood. Down the road, the Brood would end up getting abducted and converted into the Undertaker's Ministry of Darkness, as the Undertaker thought he could definitely have some good use for these vampire, I mean gothic lifestyle living superstars, in his quest to conquer the WWE. It was the Brood who helped lower the rope to Undertaker in his infamous Hell in a Cell match with the Big Boss Man at WrestleMania 15. In the end, Christian let some information slip that negatively affected the Ministry of Darkness and Edge and Gangrel would be commanded by Undertaker to punish Christian by sacrificing him. Edge and Gangrel refused and left the Ministry of Darkness. At Backlash in Your House in 99, the Brood faced Ministry members Bradshaw, Farouk and Midian in a losing effort. The Brood then entered a feud with the Hardy Boys, who were, at the time, managed by Michael Hayes. Edge and Christian were showing great promise as a tag team, and it seemed their tag matches gelled much better than combinations including Gangrel. After nearly a year of being together, on the July 11th, 99 episode of Sunday Night Heat, Gangrel turned on Edge during a match with the corporate ministry. Gangrel subsequently tried to convince Christian to do the same, but Edge and Christian ended up splitting away from Gangrel. This wouldn't necessarily be the end for the Brood, at least in name. The new Brood was formed after the Hardy Boys dumped Michael Hayes as their manager in August 99, while also turning heel in the process and aligning themselves with Gangrel. Terry Runnels also had been showing an interest in the Hardy Boys, however, and they went on to eventually win Terry services as a manager after the Terry Runnels Invitational Tournament. This led to the Hardy Boys dumping Gangrel. The Terry Runnels Invitational Tournament had ended at WWF No Mercy in a ladder match between the Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian. 
The match was revolutionary for the time, as all four men put their bodies through an incredible amount of stress. This led to all four men receiving a standing ovation the next night on Raw from the sellout crowd. On the same night, the Hardy Boys announced that they were not the new brood, they were the Hardy Boys, and this led to all four men in the ring giving Gangrel a beatdown after he made comments about Terry. And thus, the brood angle had ended. We all know what Edge and Christian would go on to accomplish as both tag team and singles wrestlers, but to be brief, they both had great success, in particular Edge, who went on to become a huge main event player in the WWE. But what about Gangrel? Gangrel remained in the WWE, but was used mainly as a mid to lower card talent. He worked alongside his wife Luna for a brief while, but was let go of his contract in 2001. The rumour was that, as ridiculous as this sounds, his shirt once came up over his gut during a match and Vince McMahon was so repulsed by his out of shape body that he got fired. I'm not making this up by the way, it's a well known rumour that's out there. From 2001 right up until this very day, Gangrel works in the indies and has had quite a fair bit of success, thanks mainly to the widely popular WWF Attitude Era that he was involved in. He got work on Hulk Hogan's tour of Australia, worked with Shikara and House of Hardcore, along with a multitude of other promotions in the US and UK. Gangrel made some appearances for WWE in the years that followed, and even signed to return to the company on two occasions. In 2005, he was given another WWE contract and he appeared in OVW. He was released however before anything came of it. The following year, Gangrel was re-signed as a potential for WWE's newest brand, ECW, to appear in a vampire stable with Kevin Thorne and Ariel, possibly another iteration of the brood, but he never appeared. He did appear though on the 15th anniversary WWE Raw special in late 2007, where he participated in a 15-man battle royal. The style, the entrance and the theme music of the brood sure was memorable and the stable helped springboard the careers of Edge and Christian while also giving Gangrel some purpose in the WWE for a short time. For these reasons, while short lived, we have to look at the brood as nothing but a success in the WWE that is fondly remembered today. <laughs> 